Bama, Georgia, SEC championship game, as we all expected. We've got Gary Harris on the line from WVUA to talk about it. Uh, Gary, as mentioned off the top, this is what we expected, and this is what we're getting, but maybe not necessarily the teams being in this condition coming into this game. Yeah, I agree, Mark. And, and just to be honest, going forward at the top of the interview, I'm having a hard time finding a path for Alabama to win this game against Georgia, uh, just in all honesty. Not that I don't think Alabama isn't a good team, because Alabama's a very good team. I mean, they went 11-1. and one, They went 7-1 and one in the SEC West, which I think is the most competitive division. Forget conference, just division in, in all of college football. And so they have uh, – they've, they've been really good. Uh, this is not last year's Alabama team, though. I think it's a remarkable coaching uh, achievement by Nick Saban that this team is 11-1 and one with, with a lot of flaws, a lot of injuries – a lot of new faces, but uh, when you look at this game, you know, two years ago it was it was Notre Dame's year. You know, 2010 it was Auburn's year. Alabama's had several of those seasons where it was just their year and their time. I go back to 2009 after Alabama had lost the year before to Florida in the SEC championship game in the fourth quarter. They came back as a five-point underdog and beat the number one ranked undefeated Gators with Tim Tebow and went on to win their first national championship under Nick Saban. It was their time. I, I think this is Georgia's time, Mark. I think this is the best football team that Kirby uh, Smart has had. I think it's probably the best Georgia football team since maybe 1982. That team didn't win the national championship, but they were undefeated going into the Sugar Bowl. Of course, 1980, they won it. Uh, and Kirby's had a couple of great teams. Mark Rick had a couple of great teams. But I think this is the best Georgia team since those Herschel Walker teams in the early 80s. And I think it's their time. I, I think they're a better football team uh, defensively. I don't know. I, they're doing something, Mark, that I didn't think was possible in this day and age with the offensive rules the way they are and the explosive offenses, they're putting up defensive numbers like we saw 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Some of these great Alabama defenses. I mean, they're giving up under under seven points a game, 83 points total on the season, 69 of that actually just given up by the defense. So they're phenomenal. They're solid. They're healthier than Alabama. They've been able to dictate in every game they've played. Um, it's been on their terms because they've been so much better. I think, Alabama's only shot is to somehow get out in front, get it into the second half, and see if Georgia gets uncomfortable uh, having to come from behind, which they have not had to do. But, you know, that's just my feelings, and we'll get into more reasons why. But but I think that uh, it's very difficult to see Alabama winning this game, particularly with the injury situation. They've got one healthy scholarship running back, Trey Sanders, and he's coming off two years of major injuries. Uh, we don't know Brian Robinson Jr.'s status. Even if he plays, he's not going to be 100% healthy. So it's a banged-up Alabama team coming off a brutally tough four-overtime game at Jordan-Hare Stadium against Auburn. And uh, I think Georgia's just in the catbird seat here. Yeah, Georgia, probably the two best teams they've faced this year. Not necessarily the two best offenses, but the two best teams, Clemson and uh, Arkansas. If you watch those games beyond the statistics that you just cited that are amazing, uh, if you doubled their points given up this year, they'd still lead yep. the nation in in points given up. Uh, but it, it's more than just, again, the e effectiveness of the defense. It's like they don't even allow the other team to to run the play half the time. They're blowing up in the backfield and not even allowing them to get the play started. Uh, so it's a it's just uh, amazing. It's it's just all this five star recruiting has is now gelling and coming into they've they've had really good teams obviously the last five years but this is the one that's just hitting on all cylinders especially on that side of the ball. Gary with Alabama we saw two different versions of what's wrong the last two weekends mm -hmm. against Arkansas. Bryce Young is throwing for record yardage totals, mm -hmm. but they can't uh, get off the field defensively. And then this week it's just a rock fight mm -hmm. uh and they the, the resiliency of this team and i think nick saban that's why he was so emotional after the game uh, i think he really pulls for this team and really loves this team but man they struggled against auburn yeah no doubt about it i mean it they were running uphill the entire game and a lot of that is because auburn defensively played in a fashion that they had not played all season and were aggressive and blitz packages and and didn't sit back. And, and maybe that's something they should have done more of. And some of it was self-inflicted uh, errors by Alabama. They've had some of that this year, whether it's turnovers or short punts or can't get a third and one or fourth and one or what have you. But And they could never get in rhythm offensively in the game. But in that fourth quarter, when they had to have it, Bryce Young, came alive. And and I will say this, Mark, he is a special player. Bryce Young is a special talent. And I will 
go ahead and, and say on the record that Georgia's played 12 games. They have not faced a quarterback the caliber of Bryce Young. I don't even think close to Bryce Young. So Bryce Young is going to give Alabama a chance to win any game that they play because, as you said, he, he broke a 52-year-old record for passing yards in a single game against Arkansas and could have had more, had some drops in that game, missed a receiver or two, five touchdowns. And even though Auburn held him in check, it wasn't just the last drive. You know, Alabama had 222 yards of offense in that fourth quarter. You know, they went up and down the field. Remember, they had a short field goal where – Paul Tyson dropped the snap. They had to settle for another short field goal after they had a first and goal. And then that 97-yard drive was one for the ages. I mean, it's one of the greatest drives in college football history. When you consider the fact there's a minute 35 seconds, they've got no timeouts remaining in the game, uh, and they go 97 yards, and they didn't do it on two or three plays. I mean, they matriculated the ball down the field, got out of bounds, got third and tens, fourth and sevens, and set that 28-yard touchdown up to a true freshman, Ja'Cory Brooks, who had as many catches on that drive, including – the tying touchdown is he'd had the entire season too. So Alabama offensively, even though they were not in sync in that game, Georgia has not faced an offense like Alabama's this season. And when Alabama's on, they can score. Now they've had some issues in the offensive line. Uh, and of course, against Auburn, losing Jamison Williams in the first half to a targeting penalty on a punt return was killer because he is the one wide receiver that can take the top off the defense. John Mechie's terrific, but he's more of a possession guy. So I think for Alabama, they can put that game against Auburn behind them quickly. They know they're better than that on offense. I do obviously worry about their ability to block up front and run the football, particularly if Brian Robinson Jr. isn't able to go. But throwing the football, you got a, you got a puncher's chance anytime Bryce Young is taking the snaps, Mark. And that is the one reason that I think Alabama people have have some hope in this game is that Georgia has not seen a quarterback like Bryce Young, period, in the story. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people, including myself, did not turn that game off with 90 seconds left in the game because we know Nick Saban's track record and we're seeing it now week to week. His his legacy obviously has been sealed for years and years and years. Bryce Young is building his legacy and we saw uh, maybe the most important bullet point of his young career come on that Saturday night drive. Uh, it was remarkable. It did not surprise me. I don't care what the FPI probability rate yeah. was right. on the, the winning percentage at that point. I, I felt as though, okay, this is Alabama. Uh, I got to see the last second go off the clock, especially in this game against Auburn, based yeah. on what the craziness we've seen yeah. in the last decade. That being said, the psychological advantage uh, – stays in the Alabama camp until proven wrong. We saw a monumental win by Michigan and Jim Harbaugh, so it can't happen. Uh, but, uh, of course, Nick Saban has owned this rivalry against Georgia, even though most of the games have been excruciatingly close. Yeah, 6-1 and one against them since he uh, has been in Alabama. The only loss was in overtime in 2007, his very first season. So, yeah, he's had Georgia's number. We know that. But, again, um, you know, you see teams that are – I always say, Mark, and we may have talked about this, when you're good enough, long enough, eventually you're going to kick that door in. You know what I mean? It, you, you, you know, teams that flash every now and then have a remarkable season but aren't consistently good, it comes and it goes. Georgia has been consistently good since Kirby got there. I mean, they won eight games his first year. In the last five, they won double figures every year, played for a national championship, uh, won a couple SEC titles. I mean, they're, you know, they're really good. And like with Michigan against Ohio State, you know, Jim Harbaugh just kept pecking away. It wasn't like they had been bad. They just couldn't beat Ohio State. But this year was their time. It was their year. And they didn't just beat Ohio State. They, they handled them. I would not be surprised if Georgia wins this game by, by double digits. In fact, you know, I'm going to predict Georgia to win it by 10. And uh, not because Alabama's a bad team. Alabama's a very good team. But I just think Georgia's better. I think it's their time. They have been so close. Again, I go back to 2008. I was in Atlanta when Alabama lost in the fourth quarter to Tim Tebow in Florida that year. Uh, you know, Tebow just ripped their, their hearts out there in the fourth quarter, but Alabama used that to fuel them. And the next year, even though Florida was number one and unbeaten, Alabama was number two and unbeaten, Alabama, it was their time. I think this is Georgia's time. I, I think they're going to be too much for Alabama, but Alabama won't lay down. Like you said, not, not with Nick Saban coaching and not with Bryce Young at quarterback and a defense that, let's be honest, they have had some issues this year, but 
they held Auburn to 158 or nine yards in, in total in the game and really dominated in the second half. So that gives Alabama some hope, too, because it's not like Georgia is the type of team that's just going to run away from you scoring points. Now, they're very good on offense. They're great at what they do. Stetson Bennett is exactly the kind of quarterback they need. That's why they haven't gone back to JT Daniels, because Stetson Bennett, I think, is the best quarterback for that team. And Kirby Smart knows that, regardless of what other people think. So it's not like Georgia's bad on offense, but they're not as explosive as some other offenses that Alabama's played against. So you just just hope if you're an Alabama supporter that you can hang into the game, get George in the second half where maybe Stetson Bennett then has to throw the football. And they have to, you know, they've dictated terms the entire year playing out front, grinding you down, running the ball. If they get behind in the second half, how will they respond? We don't really know. So that's uh, that's what you're hoping for if you're Alabama. But but I just think Georgia's too much. I think it's their time again. And I think they'll they'll cash in on Saturday. And I think a lot of that evaluation of JT Daniels better than Stetson Bennett has more to do with recruiting ranking and people not being able to get that out of their mind. Five star got to be right. better than the three star. Yeah, so bigger he's arm. Be the starting yeah. quarterback. Yeah. Um, you know, on the the Alabama side, Gary, as we talked to uh, Gary Harris, you can catch him on WVUA there in Tuscaloosa. Um, Gary, I lost my train of thought. I was trying to string that out. I had something to hit you with. Shoot. Um, yeah, we're probably running out of time. Shoot. I, I, I don't <laughs> want to okay. take that. I just completely blanked uh, of where I was going to take uh, the, the, the last portion of this. Oh. So, Gary, if your prediction is correct, a 10-point Georgia win, that's going to open up all sorts of debate concerning this college football playoff ranking. Because you can certainly take uh, the side that, shoot, Alabama loses this game. We don't care. They're one of the four best teams in the country. Two losses be damned. That's the way it is. On the other side, it's they didn't earn it. Not a conference champ. They lost two games. We have to discard them. And I think 10 points might be that sweet spot. Because if they play a razor close game, there's going to be a strong level of support. And rightfully so, that they should be in the playoff. They get blown out. Even though they might be one of the four best teams in the country, well, they got blown out. We don't need to see this game again in the playoff. Give somebody else a chance. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of it will depend, obviously, Mark, on how the other games play, the other conference championship games. Let's say this game goes as I think it's going to go. Let's say it's 27-17. Let's say it's very competitive, uh, you know, into the third or the fourth quarter, and Georgia seals it late and wins by 10. Um, on the surface, you would think, well, Alabama's out. But let's say there is some – some chaos. Let's say Houston beats Cincinnati. Let's say Iowa beats Michigan. You know what I mean? Let's say that Oklahoma State gets beaten by Baylor. And then all of a sudden, if you've got a two-loss Alabama team that won its division, that played Georgia uh, into the fourth quarter, which not many teams have done. In fact, nobody's done it other than Clemson in the first game of the season in a defensive game. Then Alabama still might have a strong case as a 11-2 and two team to get into that college football playoff. Now, if it if Alabama loses, even if it's a tight margin, and, and Michigan wins and Cincinnati wins and Oklahoma State wins, I don't think Alabama's getting into the playoff. I just think there'll be too much resistance to a two-loss team going ahead of those conference champion teams that have one loss, right? But if there is some chaos and Alabama plays a respectable game against Georgia, I certainly think you could make a case for Alabama uh, as a two-loss team in the playoff, even over Notre Dame, who has lost its coach and will not play in a game this weekend if they're sitting there with one loss. So it's possible for Alabama to get in the playoff mark with two losses, but unlikely. Gary Harris, WVUA there in Tuscaloosa. Gary, we always appreciate the conversations. It's always great to hear from you. Thank you, Mark. I enjoy it. It's a great show, and uh, thanks for letting me be a part of it.